Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. My name is DK Bhattacharya and I will be talking about Mesolithic art in India. Before I talk about Mesolithic art in India, I want to talk about Mesolithic time a little bit. Mesolithic has been identified as early Holocene episode where only microliths have been found. Now this is the traditional definition. But then today, microliths have been found from well within Pleistocene as far down as 30,000 BC and also microliths keep continuing in Chalcolithic period as well. Sometimes they have been found even contemporary tribals like many Central Indian tribes who use microliths to cut the umbilical cord of a newborn baby. So microliths seems to be not a very hard and fast determinant to decide on the Mesolithic culture. So, when you say Mesolithic art, it is very difficult to identify the period from which this art has been executed. But then if you try to make a general statement of early Holocene experience of art and all over India, then you can say that from Ladakh in the north to almost Kerala, Kerala in the south, you have art uh, in rock shelters, in open areas and also in caves. So art is galore. Everywhere in India we have found art. They are usually executed with uh, beru, which is called ferric oxide or uh, uh, iron uh, ochre. Now sometimes there has been engraving done and on the engraving wet ochre has been rubbed so that the color goes into the engraved area and a kind of uh, permanency is given to the paintings. Most of the paintings, with the exceptions of some, represent man's involvement with the animal world about his environment. The animals that he has been hunting, the animals that he is seeing around him is all the time representing the animals. It is difficult to say why a particular animal is more often repeated and others are not. For instance, Carlyle and Cockburn, two early archaeologists of 1800, identified a rock shelter near uh, south of Allahabad in Sohaga rock shelter it is called and there they found a rhinoceros uh, engraving and this rhinoceros is an extinct variety it is called rhinoceros indicus and in the floor of the cave they found a lot of microliths and the beginning of the concept therefore came from as early as 1880s that this is Mesolithic art, number one, because there are microliths, number two, because this rhinoceros is already extinct. So this must be a primitive uh, execution because the rhinoceros is known to them. So in an indirect way, there was no date available, in an indirect way, it was argued that this represents Mesolithic art. But then, when you look at the cluster that was discovered in 1960s called Bhimbetka rock shelters, it's in central India, Raisin district, more than 600 rock shelters and caves have been found in this cluster. V.S. Wakankar is the person who discovered it. Here you have all kinds of panels, all kinds of panels of multiple animals and one panel of multiple animals have been called the zoo panel. Another panel shows animals riding in it, um, riding a horse with a sword in one hand and shield in another and so on and so forth. Wakankar divided this into four stages and he said the earliest one is Paleolithic, late Paleolithic, the next one is Mesolithic and the third one is Chalcolithic and the fourth one is early historic. So this is the way a kind of calibration was done and obviously the, any, the human figure riding a horse with a sword and a shield were taken as early historic depictions. But anyway, the depictions are very interesting. I will talk about one depiction which is about 140 centimeter long and this is one of the largest depiction in Bhimbetka clusters. This is on a mushroom like extension of the rock shelter and this is just behind the rock shelter which has been excavated which is called 3F23. The rock shelter is numbered 3F23 and uh, behind, immediately behind it, there is a ledge of the rock shelter in the form of a mushroom and on the, on the bottom of the ledge this painting has been executed which is about 140 centimeter long. A peculiar animal is shown charging. This animal has ears like a pig. It is called a mythical boar. Mythical boar because it looks like a pig. Its snout is like a rhinoceros. And it has a pair of horns. No pig has a horn. A rhinoceros horn is on the nose. But this is horn in the usual uh, place as the horns are in cows. 
the lower part of the snout has a lip like an elephant and there is a couple of lines drawn from the genital a flowing line and a small piglet is made on the flowing lines so this was given to feel or to interpret that possibly the lines are showing semen a man is shown running away as if the pig is charging the man and of course another man is shown with a with a kind of a stick and in the stick a series of microliths are embedded this is the first time you see a painting where in the painting also microliths are being shown. So unlike Carlyle and Cockburn, where microliths were found on the surface and the drawing was of a rhinoceros, the association was made on the basis of the surface find as Mesolithic art. Here you have a Mesolithic art definitely proving that microliths were being used in the, in the, in the time that the painting was made. Now this is a very interesting phenomenon. We have always said that primitive man cognitive level is on the perception of what he sees around him. Now obviously he doesn't see animal like a pig with a pair of horns. Pig doesn't have horns. And the same way he doesn't see an, a pig having an elephant like lower lip. We have another kind of uh, art which is not only in India, we find in many places especially in Australia. where the outline of the body of the animal is done and inside the skeleton is drawn and this is called x-ray painting x-ray painting because as if the animal has been x-rayed and inside the body bones are visible now here again you see the cognitive aspect of having seen an animal but going beyond what is what is perceptible man is not making his cognitive world or his symbolic world on the basis of what he is seeing around him but he goes beyond it to create a symbolic world otherwise he is not able to make the, the kind of uh, x-ray painting that he does. In the same way in Bhimbetka there is another cave where is another pig is shown with a huge flowing uh, kind of horns. A pig with horns seem to be a symbolic attribute of a kind of animal that these people try to show. So what I am trying to say is that Bhimbetka gives an opportunity to express that man's symbolic world was a parallel world created by him from his symbolic cognitions and his external perception of the world around him. So what is perceived in the world around him, he added a symbolic dimension, the horns here, the x-ray in there and these are the way he created a parallel world for himself. And this parallel world continues to explain the symbolic world that man tried to cr create around him. We have many such evidences coming from Bhimbetka, not one but other hundreds of them. There are 500 caves and almost all of them have some painting or the other. We will not talk about the other paintings because they are not Mesolithic paintings. Now these are the Mesolithic paintings that I am talking about. Now this in along with the fact that there is a perspective that I need to talk about. The perspective of Bhimbetka painting shows that if the main object that you are drawing is in the center of the panel then the object which is farthest from it is drawn is drawn above this main panel suppose there is a main pig and you are emphasizing on the pig and there is a distant man standing that man will be shown above the pig now this is a perspective that is quite common in all the drawings of Bhimbetka there are some drawings of Bhimbetka which shows economic activity which is very interesting uh, fish large number of fish being carried in a net is one of the economic activity which shows very successful fishing economy that is f followed by these uh, these Bimbetka folks. Then there is another where hunting is shown there is not one several uh, panels where hunting is shown there is one panel where the hunter is being chased by the hunted that means the bull that was being uh, that has been hit is now chasing the hunter and in one instance the hunter has been thrown above the body and one can see him lying on the backside of the animal. So the verb of the, the activity of hunting and the risk involved in it has all been shown in this panel. A third thing that is very interesting about Bhimbetka painting is that there are, there are group dances 
one of the group dances which is done in green color and it is believed that this is the oldest in Bhimbetka shows a series of men standing and their body profile is like a English S a body profile they have a kidney shaped mask and there's a circle made near the mask and they're holding each other and they're dancing now this dancing is a very interesting phenomena that I've talked of elsewhere also why does people dance why do hundreds of people come together on a particular occasion and dance together the occasion is this I must articulate what is known as organic solidarity the feeling of we the people we are together we belong here this weeness has to be inculcated by way of what is known as rituals and dancing is one of the most important rituals which articulate the formation of organic solidarity there is another kind of solidarity which is called mechanical solidarity but that has nothing to do with primitive band structure a band structure in which a organic solidarity is of primeval interest and that is why dancing scenes are quite common in Bhimbetka and its associate sculpture or associate rock shelters now this round circle near the mouth of the dancers it is believed it is commented by Neumeyer it is believed that they show that they are also singing so the round thing is talking about the sound they're producing so singing and dancing are giving a tangible representation singing and dancing you can talk about when you have a video cassette but imagine a time when you have no video cassette and yet your mind is saying that I must represent this important ritual of organic solidarity how do I do it I create a dancing figure and this is done with such a verb and dynamics that even the loincloth of the dancers are shown flying into the air so there is a dynamicity in the entire dancing scene that has been created in Bhimbetka very close to Bhimbetka not very close of course as the crow flies it's not very far in the Satpura ranges you have a city or you have a site called Pachmari Pachmari is a hill center which is quite common uh, commonly known to people in India and there are about 500 rock shelters 1000 1000 panels and these panels show not much difference of the Bhimbetka style but the representations in these panels are always a little uh, different from Bhimbetka. Bhimbetka shows originality here you see activities which are quite mundane for instance a man is shown with a flute in his hand Certainly, it can't be Mesolithic. A man is shown with a flute in his hand. A chariot is shown, a man standing on the chariot. So you have difference of a, a domestic activity of pounding the floor and so on. Monkeys are shown. But again, Pachmari has one or two excavations in, in, in rock shelters where plenty of microliths have been found. On the ground that there are microliths found here, and on the ground that there are rock shelter painting here Pachmari rock shelters majority of them have also been declared as Mesolithic art but we know that it must be very late Mesolithic if at all because it doesn't compare with the with the styles and the and the, and the ancient paintings that we see in in, in Bhimbetka we come to the western part of India I, I'll take a survey of Mesolithic art of India in the region wise manner so central India we have talked of and they're very rich there's no doubt about it we come to the western part in the western part you have Gujarat and eastern Gujarat this is Rajasthan and Rajasthan you have uh, many places especially uh, behind Chambal where hundreds of rock shelters have been found there are rock shelters galore in Rajasthan and also some parts in eastern Gujarat but the problem is uh, in in, uh, uh, in parts which are bordered to Rajasthan. Uh, Savarkata, Savarkata district is very interesting in Gujarat. Now the problem of Gujarat and Rajasthan is that they are notorious, these areas are notorious for, uh, for querying rock. Almost all rock structures that we find in India, rock is being constantly queried from these parts and sold in India and there are companies which are taking the rocks. 
and the process of which the rock quarrying they are destroying the art sites of the arts and many rock shelters are being destroyed so it is very difficult to identify what is modern rock shelter what is medieval what is early history or what is mesolithic even then if you look at the uh, art executed in them you find that there are human figures represented animals are there but these animals are basically either gazelle um, humped bull or 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 monkeys monkeys are in pachmari also there are plenty of monkeys monkeys are not there in bhimbetkar so you see some regional characters developing and uh, western india uh, in 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 gujarat you have a painting of a ship or a boat with sails now how can it be mesolithic it certainly is not mesolithic so you have when you consider rock shelter you have to take the entire evidence and try to weed out some as mesolithic the rest of them you have to keep as early historic or chalcolithic but anyway you have evidences from western india in galore is not one or two but hundreds of them but many of them are getting destroyed because of the querying stone querying activity that is going on in rajasthan mostly i come to eastern india in eastern india i have bihar jharkhand and west bengal and in bihar jharkhand you have hundreds of sites that has been identified with almost all the same kind of drawings of animals humped bulls and gazelle and uh, uh, and um, bison and so on but the problem of jharkhand colonel prasad has been the one who has been documenting all these drawings and uh, has identified many with very strong expertise but the problem with many of them is that there is invariably either a kharoshthi inscription or a brahmi inscription found with the drawing now the inscription is done by engraving so there is there is chiseled out brahmi script and this led professor uh, prasad to Uh, to uh, hypothesize that there were two capitals in india one was patna which is pataliputra the other was tamluk or or the uh, uh, tamri tamra tamralipi in in bay of bengal so the, between the two uh, groups of capitals traders used to go and the shortest way of the trading um, path was the jharkhand mountains and forests so the paintings may have been done by those uh, those uh, gandhara painters and he goes on to say that gandhara is the only group who comes from kandahar who had lapis lazuli with them perhaps you know that green color is very uncommon in any painting even ajanta elora you do not find green if i know only one panel of green color because green is obtained by crushing lapis lazuli and making a paste of it and it seems that is some places even green has been used in these jharkhand paintings and that led prasad to indicate that these are the gandhara traders because there is kharoshthi and brahmi group of inscription also these were the people who went through the shortcut of the jharkhand forest to reach tamralipti we come to andhra is also to be counted as east because half of andhra is towards the east half in the south and you find in andhra huge amount of rock art huge amount and this rock art is quite different from the central indian rock art or the western indian rock art there seems to be more of uh, more of signs and symbols all kinds of signs and symbol and also female genitals have been made in the paintings of all this art there are some in which stick like representation of human being is done stick like representation in human being is done and stick like representation of human being has been found also in in the western part and also in bhimbetkar so you have a possibility of a uniformity in the region Andhra we need to discuss in great detail because of two reasons you have the signs and symbols galore then you have also those engravings which we talked about when we talked about tekkalkota 
we have engravings done or bruisings done or picking done on the walls of the rocks wherever man had their own hut creation. So you have two kinds of art exhibition uh, executed in South India, especially Andhra. And they show a range of characters, but not anything similar to Central India, Bhimbetka, Pachmari and the like. In other words, Andhra is to be taken as possibly early Neochalco. We talked about Deccan Neolithic and you know Deccan Neolithic is also the Calcutta where we found those uh, uh, the bruisings done on the wall. Then we find the same kind of bruisings done in sites also, many of these sites where it has been excavated. So if you consider art, you have to consider also them. And you consider them, you have to consider them as pre-metal early Holocene culture. So if it is pre-metal early Holocene, what is it but Mesolithic? So if you have to talk about Mesolithic art of India, I think you need to consider many of the bruisings and the paintings that are in symbols and signs that are, uh, that are found all over South India, especially Andhra Pradesh. We come to uh, Southern India, Tamil Nadu and of course Kerala. The art that has been found in Kerala in rock shelters is very young. It's very young. It can't be Mesolithic. But there are also series of symbols and series of signs are the main engraving done on the rock wall. And if you try to tam uh, see Tamil Nadu art also, there are some in which stick-like human figures are shown. It's very difficult to say whether it is Mesolithic or not. You go straight up north to Ladakh. And in Ladakh, especially in Zanskar Valley, you find in open air, like Koa in Portugal, in open air rocks in which there are paintings done or engravings done, but they are not older than 1000 BC. So you have 1000 BC as the earliest rock shelter in Ladakh and about the same date 1000 BC as the rock shelters of Kerala and Tamil Nadu. But the main hub of Mesolithic art, the main hub of Mesolithic art seems to be central India, possibly also extended into eastern India of Jharkhand and Bihar. I said Jharkhand and Bihar because part of the same group of executions or representations are found in Jamui district of Bihar, which is not in uh, Jharkhand anymore. So you have a continuity of these paintings and it is very difficult to prove that they are Mesolithic, primarily because of this Kharoshti and Brahmi Lipi. Kharoshti and Brahmi Lipi epigraphically is proved to be of later Gandhara period. So only reason that Prasad claimed that the origin of art in the region is of Mesolithic period is because in many of the rock shelters the surface is galore with microliths. There are a huge amount of microliths lying scattered in the surface. I must remind myself that microliths alone does not make a culture Mesolithic. But it is a traditional thinking that if microliths are there, it must be Mesolithic. So you know, you have a, you have a kind of 50-50 stand on which you have to call them as early Holocene culture. Professor Prasad goes to the extent of saying the oldest rock art of Jharkhand is datable to 5000 BC, which is middle Holocene period. Now obviously he doesn't put it in 9000 BC, he puts it in 5000 BC. But this is just speculative. You can't prove this way or that way. If you look at the uh, representations, well, they have the stick like human figure. One thing which is common from Gujarat, Rajasthan, Central India, Andhra, Jharkhand, and to South India is that all of them have different forms of palm printing. Palm printing can be of three kinds. One which is called stenciled painting. That means you have the print in negative and the color is spread over the top of it. The other is called positive palm painting. That is you dip your palm in color and put the color painting as it is. And the third one is taking the palm like this and putting a, a finger outline with paint like this. So you have three kinds of palm print and they are found all through in all the art executions of the entire Indian art evidences. Sometimes the palm printing includes part of the arm, two arms with the palms. So if there is anything which cuts across all regional variation and which cuts across all temporal variation, early historic, Mesolithic, Chalcolithic, 
everywhere you find the palm printing. So one lowest common denominator of prehistoric rock art in India is palm printing. It doesn't prove whether it is Mesolithic or Neolithic or Chalcolithic or early historic. So you have some similarity all over, but when you go back as, as in order to conclude, you find the hub of development of, of Mesolithic art in India is definitely Bhimbetka cluster with Pachmari cluster and not beyond. So you have a development which is Central Indian. And the peripheral developments you see this side in Rajasthan and Gujarat and this side in Jharkhand and Bihar and in the south Andhra and a part of Tamil Nadu and Kerala. So you have a regional spread with some similarities of course but the hub of development of Mesolithic art is in central India. Before we conclude we must remember that we can't neglect the fact that there are large amount of representations of human figures riding a horse with a sword and a shield. Now this certainly shows development of a martial art or development of a commercial group of complex society with their own armies. How could armies be dem demonstrated in prehistoric art or galleries of art is a different issue. But the point remains that we find a huge amount of these, these executions representations in both Bhimbetka cluster as also Pachmari cluster. But domestic activities, which certainly are activities after Neolithic period, are not shown so much in Bhimbetka. Bhimbetka shows hunting, Bhimbetka shows dancing, but it doesn't show domestic activity. And with, 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 with monkeys, I mean, there are a large number of monkeys even there in Bhimbetka, even today, but they are not shown in any of the paintings. But you see monkeys being painted all over in Pachmari hills and Pachmari caves are even today full of monkeys. Many of the caves have been usurped by sadhus and they are doing puja inside the cave with the rock shelters or the rock painting as a part of their deities. So you find a continuity of belief structure. Art has gone to rock shelters because of two things. If you go near a cave and say loudly something, the cave replies back. The, the sound re echoes back from the cave and immediately you attribute a spirit to the cave. A spirit to the cave because the cave is the place which has its own soul and own mind to talk. And therefore you go for all your spiritual activity inside the cave. And no wonder the sadhu, even today in Pachmari, prefers to make a temple inside the cave and does his puja with the prehistoric rock art right there by his side. So you have a continuity of sorts. I'm not trying to propose that India is that archaic land where every culture is shown a continuity. Sanatana, sada iti sanatana. I'm not saying that. But I'm definitely trying to say the human weakness towards spiritual reality around himself is a perennial concept. You find it in India, you find it in Bolivia, you find it in many places in the world and India is not an exception to it.